Hey everyone, and welcome to our video, Oral Output versus Conversation. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between activities that seem like conversation with true conversations. But before we get started, here's a little joke for you. I was just looking at my ceiling. Not sure if it's the best ceiling in the world, but it's definitely up there. <laughs> Not all speaking activities yield the same results. Before you decide to make use of an activity, ask yourself this question. Am I setting up monologues or dialogues? If the answer is the former, you might want to rethink your choice of activity. Activities that set students up to use the target language to interact conversationally are far superior because the most effective way to develop language is with loads of input and loads of output. Many activities such as think, pair, shares, classroom discussions in which students just answer teachers' questions, jigsaws, gallery walks, and group projects have students talking, but much of the talking is what we call oral output. Oral output is one way one time, clear and strong communication of ideas and thinking. But these are mostly monologues where one student shares their answer and the other student waits for their turn to share. Conversely, conversations are back and forth interactions in which participants build on one another's ideas to build up ideas that weren't in their minds before talking. Dialogues allow students to start with basic ideas and build them up into a concept that they had not thought up before. These two examples illustrate the difference between speaking and talking. As you can see, conversations allow for the maximization of both language input and language output. In a conversation, every other turn the learner is pushed to understand their partner's talk. As meaning is made, the words and grammar tend to stick in the brain. Language is reinforced as it is used multiple times. Every other turn, output pushes a learner to try new ways of constructing and clarifying messages, putting ideas into words and sentences that the other can understand. As the learner succeeds in communicating meaning to others, the language used tends to stick. In addition to providing both input and output, each turn in a conversation creates many challenges for both partners to overcome, usually at each person's zone of proximal development. For example, if you and I are talking, I am challenged each turn to get my idea across as well as possible. Or I'm challenged to understand what you are trying to say. In addition, the benefits of conversation are twofold. First, they encourage content learning, while at the same time supporting language development. Another benefit of conversations is that they boost academic language. Conversations help students learn content by forcing them to clarify, support, and think about what they are saying and want to articulate more deeply. Every turn, a student is either trying to clarify content ideas to their partner or trying to understand the ideas being clarified by their partner. Conversations require new ideas about content. These ideas need to be supported by evidence and reasoning. Partners push one another to think about the topic more deeply. Students usually remember content better when they negotiate, build up, and support ideas alongside one another. Now a major question that most people have about conversation-based learning is what to do with partners of differing ability levels. Because Let's face it, most students are advanced students, but beginning conversationalists. 
conversations with lower ability partners provide their own challenges, but also unique benefits. About 50% of the time, students are going to be partnered up with someone who is of a lower ability level. And this challenges them to clarify and simply articulate the ideas that they're trying to get across. This type of repetition will help their fluency, word choice, and content breakdown. Conversations with higher ability students provide different challenges and different benefits. The other half of the time, students will be challenged to elaborate and provide support, evidence, and details to bolster their argument or explain why their idea is valid. The saying that two heads are better than one has been around for a long time for a reason. Partners help each other understand and think more deeply about topics. They challenge each other. They provide a new perspective and another point of view that students would not otherwise have heard. Conversations force partners to work together, not against each other, even if they disagree. Conversations help partners open up to learning new ideas and having their own ideas changed. Strangely, conversations are one of the most underutilized activities in most language classrooms. Even though they maximize time spent practicing the language, using new thinking skills, and communicating and co-constructing new concepts with others. In conclusion, many students are in dire need of authentic practice in using language to communicate. Their brains are wired to use language to engage, learn, describe, and build ideas with others. Conversations are powerful ways to develop language regardless of the content area, texts, tests, or curricula that you are using.